In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the different lab equipment you're going to be using in pre-AP chemistry, what it's called and what it's used for. Let's take a look at our glassware. You're going to be using beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks. Uh, generally, they're used to measure approximate volume. So if you're doing a lab that says you want about 100 milliliters, you could use a beaker. Um, they have different shapes for different particular uses that we'll see in labs, but you're never going to measure anything specifically with a beaker or a flask. They're more for measuring approximate volumes and for holding liquids. Okay, you're also going to be using a graduated cylinder. Um, this one is specifically for measuring up to 100 milliliters. This is what you're going to use to measure exact volumes. You're going to be using a graduated cylinder of um, some size. We have 10 milliliters, 50 milliliters, 100 milliliters, and even bigger, but these are going to give you exact volumes. Now you also could use a, a plastic disposable pipette, and the pipette is really just used for making drops of liquid, so if you want to get that exact volume, you can use the pipette to add your liquid to your graduated cylinder. Okay, when we use test tubes, there are two pieces of lab equipment that you need to know. One are the test tube tongs. That's what you would hold in your hand that will grasp a test tube. You can use it if you needed to heat up the test tube or if you didn't want to touch the test tube for some reason, you could use the tongs. You'll also need a test tube rack to put your test tube in so that it stands up or if you have multiple test tubes you need to manage, you can put them all in a test tube rack. Another way that you can use a test tube um, to be heated is over a Bunsen burner and you can see that you would clamp your test tube to something called a ring stand and a ring stand is basically just a support system. You can clamp a bunch of different things to it. I'm going to show you various clamps and what they're used for but the ring stand is really just the base for holding the clamp so you can suspend things over a Bunsen burner or um, for different reasons. One other use for a ring stand is to use something called a crucible, and the crucible is the small little porcelain uh, container you see. It is used specifically for heating up solids, and there are a specific set of tongs that are used with the crucible, called crucible tongs. And then you also need a, a ring clamp attached to your ring stand and a clay triangle. So to set up the crucible, you want to put it in the clay triangle which is sitting on the ring stand and you could suspend it above a Bunsen burner because you're going to be heating what's in the crucible. Now there are two ways you can use the crucible tongs. If you flip them over so that the tongs are pointing down then you can grasp the lid which will cover the crucible. If you flip them over so the tongs are pointing up then the space in, that, in those tongs can hold the crucible when it's hot to move it on and off of the clay triangle. You never want to actually touch a crucible uh, adding your fingerprints could add to the mass and you're generally not heating a lot of solids so you always want to use those tongs when you're using the crucible. The next piece of glassware we're going to look at is called a watch glass and really it's just kind of a multi-purpose dish. For example, you could put it on a triple beam balance and use it to hold the chemical that you're finding the mass of because you never want to put the chemical directly on the balance. A couple of other pieces of lab equipment you're going to use. Um, one is called a scoopula and it's really just what it sounds like. It's used to scoop solids into maybe a, a beaker or an evaporating dish or a watch glass wherever you need that solid to go. It's like our chemistry spoon really. And then you can also use a glass stirring rod and just like the name says it's used to stir things. It is made out of glass so that it won't react with any of the solutions that you're stirring. The next piece of lab equipment is, has a very specific purpose. It's used for a lab technique called a titration, and this is something that we'll get to later on in the spring when we get to acids and bases. But the purpose of a burette is not to contain a liquid and measure how much liquid is in the container like a graduated cylinder, but it's actually used to dispense a liquid. So you can see at the top arrow, there's the level of the liquid but the numbers are increasing as you go down. So as the liquid comes out where the bottom arrow is pointing, you're actually measuring how much liquid comes out of the burette. So it's used to dispense liquid uh, rather than actually to hold liquid. 
Okay, now I've, you've seen this one before. This is a Bunsen burner, and we're going to be using what's called a striker to light the Bunsen burner. We're not going to be using matches, and the striker has a little piece of flint in it that creates sparks. So when you turn the gas on to the Bunsen burner, those sparks are going to ignite the gas. We've seen how you can use the Bunsen burner to heat a crucible and to heat a test tube. You can also use it to heat a beaker heat a beaker over a Bunsen burner, you would want to use beaker tongs. These tongs are specifically for picking up hot beakers and moving them on and off the ring clamp that is um, suspended over the Bunsen burner. One other thing that you could use over a Bunsen burner is an evaporating dish. And just like its name suggests, it's used to evaporate the water out of a solution so that you let, leave the solid that's dissolved in it behind. And its shape is very specific for that purpose. So you could suspend it over a Bunsen burner just like you would a beaker. This gives you a good idea of the lab equipment you're going to be using for the labs that we do in pre-AP chemistry. You need to make sure you know what they're called and what they're used for. We will introduce some other very specific lab equipment that might only pertain to one particular lab, but these are going to be the things that you're going to see most often.